All right, we are picking it up here where we have, by going to different views, we have V for view, sorry, V for view. We can go to the overall view, All right, set current. We could actually go out and change some layers and change our display. We can go to prospector here, settings, prospector. We could go back to surface, right? Go to our surface here. Bogus topo, right click, surface properties. We could change how it displays. If we wanted to apply, okay, yeah, we got some of that. That might make us feel better now. We can kind of think about topography. A lot of lines there. We can go V to view, go to profile view, set current, okay. See that laid out there. So what we have is an existing profile view, an existing profile. But we do not have a proposed profile. That's what we're going to do next. At this point, it's nice to know about what your station and elevations and the like are for your existing profile. So for instance here, if we zoom in here, right? You notice how it comes up? Well, that's telling me the profile name. I get close here. It's giving me up oh, station 2639 and 1130, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're going to see there's a lot of tools you're going to have for putting in vertical, but knowing what about your elevations are at given stations and especially where your vertical constraints are is going to become important. Uh, you want to learn as soon as you design and lay out your horizontal alignment and hopefully lock it down, meaning you're not going to shift it. Uh, you start really thinking of this site as station offset elevation, not as northings, eastings elevation. So that said, we can go ahead and create, go create profile creation tools. You'll see later on we'll probably do a lot of creating profiles from files because you really want to think this out and not just click on things. Profile creation tools, you select the profile. We're going to give this now, we're going to call this profile type. Rope, center line, September 24th. Now, what you'll see is the DOT is going to really have some very stringent naming constraints here. So we'll take a look at those as they come out. Hit OK. And now we can go ahead and start doing what students love to do so well, is to go ahead and draw tangents. And we'll start, come back later with drawing tangent with curves. Starting point. You'd like to really begin at the end point there. And now you can start thinking a little bit. Maybe I'm going to go up at, and I want to go up maybe 1,000 feet at 7%, which would be 70 feet, but comma, if you multiply the Y by 10, you're going to go 700. So you're going 1,000 right and 770 feet up. Does something like that. And now the rest of this, we can go ahead and we can kind of go ahead and we could actually grip at it. You see it kind of goes there. That's fine. And we'll see what layer that's on, LA for layer. And it's putting it on still that P alignment base, which is really not a good layer, but we'll live with it. We would like to be on a profile layer. So if we look down through here, we can go to profile, existing profile, which was where those things could be. Proposed profile might be a good idea. And we might want to go ahead then and change this. Right click, properties, change it to proposed profile base, which it seems to have done, which is pretty nice. Proposed profile base. So settings are about right. Hit a close here. And now we can go ahead and draft another tangent from the endpoint there. And I'm just going to take it so we've got a little bit of a fill and then down to the end point there. So we have gotten and we have laid in some proposed, if we look at it here, some proposed. You know it's a profile. There's lots of different things, but it's, once again, probably very nice to go, well, what layer is this on? Well, P prof base, what layers is that on? P prof base, those should not be on the same layer, and we'll have to learn to play with that. So P prof base should be more like E prof. Let's see if we can take that, right click, profile properties. We want that to be
E prof maybe grades. We'll see whether that worked. All right, now we might want to turn that back on, but in all reality, what you want to know that you should have data now for the proposed profile, and it looks something like this. You've got a view set up, V for view for overall and profile. The last thing you need to do before you make your corridor is to go ahead and make a assembly, and we want to do that at zero, zero. So let's just draw a box. So you can learn to jump around the plane. Let's draw a box by saying rectangle from up oh, rectangle, or draw lines from zero comma zero, and we're going to go at I don't know at two hundred comma one hundred, right? Zoom center one hundred. I'm sorry, zero comma zero, with a height of one hundred. You see our box is there. We're going to move that box over in a little bit, or even get rid of it. We want to now when we design our assemblies, we want to set that assembly baseline right at the zero zero point. So we're going to go ahead, assembly, create assembly. We'll give it September 24th, 25th. I don't know anymore. We're going to give this a really easy assembly. Right? Hit OK. And the baseline location zero comma zero. Right, it's going to drop it right at zero, zero. Now this is the point where, of course, I'm going to close that out. You want to go through and make your assembly by clicking on the tool palettes and starting with a basic. And I see a lot of students trying to make really wild assemblies to start. Start with a basic lane, shoulder, and daylight, or lane, curb, and daylight. Don't get too fancy to start. You will get fancy later, but you need to establish that everything is working right with your drawing. So we're going to grab a basic lane. We then click over here. You see it filled it out. We can grab a basic curb, and I'll just grab the basic curb, grab it there, and realize it's depending on where it's grabbing, you'd like that basic curb to be in a particular spot. So you can move those things by left clicking. You see that? there I'm gonna go left click and I can go spacebar move shift right click endpoint there so it's moved it to a basic <clears throat> spot where it's kind of following the one of the data points for the other assembly sub assembly and I'm gonna then finally go to daylight go to daylight general and bring that one in and that one came in relatively better You've got now three sub-assemblies. You're going to zoom out. You're going to highlight all of them. And then you're going to go to Mirror. And you're going to realize it's not an AutoCAD Mirror command. It's a Civil 3D Mirror command, so it's going to act different. All you need to do is grab the marker point and have it flip for you. All right. You've made an assembly. You've made a... Uh, profile proposed and you have an existing alignment you want to remember to do V for view new and call that perhaps assembly save clicky clicks off define a window from here to here it's gonna get you back to where you want to be hit OK hit apply OK and you're kind of okay now I'm gonna go V back to view and realize at this point to make a corridor you do not have to grab anything so I'm going to do that finally before we finish out the video corridor create simple corridor my corridor running out of time okay select spacebar select spacebar select you're good to go